This is literally my favorite way to cook. It's hard for me to videotape it though because sometimes I don't know if it's gonna turn out and so I feel like maybe I wasted my time. But this is what everyday cooking looks like. You have something in your refrigerator, you look around your kitchen and you say, okay, what do I wanna make? This is that dish. Hi everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we are going to do a kind of leftover interpretation of a spaghetti squash lasagna. You ready for this? It is going to be so fun. I don't even know how it's going to turn out because this is one of my classic everyday cooking adventures where I just kind of throw it together as we go. So are you in this with me? We'll see if this actually makes it into a video, but hey, I thought, let's do it. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. All right, so the other day I did a video on um, spaghetti squash where I had two huge spaghetti squashes and we did all of the spaghetti squashes and all of the different areas of cooking methods. And I ended up having so much spaghetti squash that I literally had no idea what to do with it. So I started thinking to myself, maybe I could make a spaghetti lasagna. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it together and turn on the camera and see what happens. So this is literally, I did very little prep. Um, I had the camera recording while I kind of decided what to do. I cut up an onion, I grabbed some ingredients. That's it. We're gonna put this together. It's gonna go in the oven and we're gonna see how it turns out. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, I know that I want to get my beautiful garlic and onion already ready to go. So I'm gonna put some oil in my cast iron skillet here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my garlic pressing so that I can just get it right into the pan at the same time as my onion. This is a super cool recipe and you can tailor it to any type of a, and I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I'm gonna use a jar, pasta jar sauce, jar pasta sauce. That's okay, I'm a home cook, I'm allowed to cheat. And that was about, I'm gonna say that's about four cloves of garlic-ish, give or take. All right, starting to smoke, so that's our time. Let's go ahead and hit those in. And we're just gonna saute these. Red onion was all I had today in the house. Um, I'm about to go on a trip, and so I don't have any of the white onion left over today, but I'm like, you know what, it's fine. Red onion will work perfect. It's nice and sweet, savory, delicious. So we're just gonna wanna soften that a little bit. And I'm gonna open up my ground pork. This is local fresh pork um, with zero seasoning in it, so I do need to add some Italian seasoning once it goes into the pan. Grab my salt. Oh, for a second there, I didn't have any Italian seasoning left. That would have made things a little difficult. Okay, see how we're starting to get some color on that? Let's go ahead and dump in our pork, and this is about a pound of pork. We're just gonna break it up a little bit. Oh, you know what? I should use my mix and chop. Oh well. I'm just doing what I normally do when I have leftovers I need to utilize in a meal. All right, and here is our baking dish. This is a nine by 13. I'm actually going to oil it just a little bit. And the only reason I'm going to oil it is because I don't want my noodles to stick to the bottom. My spaghetti squash noodles. I'll grab my basting brush and just move it around. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to about 375. And we'll... This already smells super delicious and it just has basic ingredients. Mm. Onion and garlic, my fave. All right, we'll let that sit again. Okay, so I'm gonna put about half of this spaghetti squash on the floor. I'm gonna put about half of this spaghetti squash down on the bottom of my pan. All the while keeping an eye on this over here because I want the brown bits, definitely, but I don't want it to be overdone. 
That's probably like half. Wrong lid. No. Nice. This is looking fantastic. So about the time you start to see the pink starting to disappear, that's when I like to season it. So I will go ahead and measure it out for you. Usually I don't. So let's use two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. And this is the Italian seasoning, seasoning from Pamper Check. You could use any Italian seasoning, it will work. All right, and we're gonna give that a good mix. All right, we're also going to salt it. My pork has zero salt in it, has zero anything. It's just ground pork, so I'm gonna need to salt mine. If you use a store-bought pork, um, just check your seasonings before you add things in. Otherwise, you might be like, whoa, in your face, and no bueno. All right, looks fantastic. All right, next we are gonna add a jar of tomatoes. And these are our ones that I canned from this year. And this is just to give it kind of more substance. And then I'm also going to add a secret weapon, some green chilies. Green chilies aren't hot, but they have a tremendous flavor profile that takes on so much other flavors. We love putting green chilies and all sorts of things that people are like there's green chilies in this i'm like yes there are and it's good so we're just gonna dump that whole thing in there and give that a good mix like it won't taste spanish it will just take on the flavor of everything that you have in here like a big goulash deliciousness mm. if i had any like of my jarred tomato sauce that doesn't have any flavor in it I would totally use that, but we got what we have. We're gonna use what we got. Use what we got. Now it's time for me to taste and adjust any seasonings that I think so far. Oh. Oh dear Lord. That is so, so, so good. Um, now I'm gonna have to taste these two things together because this is so good, I don't want it to mess it up because it's canned. Like, I mean, it's from Trader Joe's, it should be fine, but. Oh. Uh. Hold on. Hmm. That is far superior to this. So. That's just, man. What to do? All right, let's get it done. I might not add the whole jar. We will see. I will stir it up, taste, and then see what I think. Could just eat that with a spoon right here right now I'm gonna go ahead and add the whole thing just to give it a little more sauciness oh oh guys that's a good recipe that's gonna taste delicious okay let's go ahead and turn that off because we don't actually need to cook it it's gonna cook in the oven so next step is mozzarella cheese. Say what? Yep. So I have some frozen mozzarella that I grated earlier this week for a different recipe. And uh, I put it in the freezer. I usually put my cheeses in the freezer because it just doesn't get eaten as fast as maybe it goes bad. And so I'm just going to sprinkle some mozzarella cheese over the top of my spaghetti squash right here. And it's probably not more than like a fourth of a cup, maybe a third of a cup. It's not very much at all. And then we are going to just spoon this delicious sauce right over the top. And we're gonna wanna spoon about half of this because the other half needs to of course go on the top part. 
All right, is that half? I think that's half. Looks fantastic. Do you see how beautiful that looks? Oh, my mouth is watering. I can't wait. Okay, now I have Parmesan, same deal. Grated it earlier this week. It was in my freezer. I'm like, yep, we're gonna use it. So we're gonna do a very light sprinkling of Parmesan, like eighth of a cup. All right, and now we're gonna put the rest of our spaghetti squash. And this, this was about two spaghetti squash minus maybe a serving or two. Um, so you could probably make this in a nine by nine with one spaghetti squash or just buy two spaghetti squash and do them in the oven, get them ready to go, put them in your refrigerator for when you wanna assemble this. Um, Cause right now the flavors that are coming out of it that I just developed in that quick of a time, this is definitely one that I will log away as a, oh dang Gina, that's good. All right, so let's do the mozzarella first. All right, let's get on the rest of that sauce right over the top, just like the first sauce was. Oh man, this looks so good. Let's make sure to get all of those delicious bits. All right, we'll spread that out. And now we are gonna top it with cheese and more cheese. Mozzarella. And this time we want to make sure we get the mozzarella in a pretty good area because we really want it to like, like a lasagna. All right, and then sprinkle a generous amount of the Parmesan around. All right, boom, dinner is done. Now I am going to cover it. Um, this is the silicone lid from Pamper Chef. It is heat safe up to 350. Um, oh, and I have it on 375. So we're not gonna use that one. We'll use foil. I am, however, going to spray the top of my foil so it doesn't stick. All right. All right, we're gonna get this in for 35 minutes, fully covered. At the end of 35 minutes, I'm gonna take off of my cover, check the bubbliness. If I think it needs some more time to really marry together, I'll put it in for another 10 minutes. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it uncovered for about 10 minutes so five to 10 minutes, depending on how hot my oven is today, to get that cheese to brown and bubble. And then we'll see you back here with the results. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, it has just come out of the oven. It is so nice and beautifully bubbly. Um, let's see if I can get a good close up for you. Looks like lasagna. Isn't that cool? I love it. All right, let's taste this. Let's use our scoop and serve to serve it. I'm gonna keep my glove on though because it literally just came out of the oven. Usually you want to let this sit for, I don't know, five minutes or so, just so the cheeses can kind of like harden just a little bit, but I cannot wait, cannot wait to taste. Oh my word. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. Love it. All right. Let's get up close so you can see. Look at how fantastically beautiful that is. Oh. And I can't wait to taste. It's going to be really hot. I'm gonna burn myself. Mmm. Mmm. Y'all can all go home now. Wow. That, that's phenomenal. It's hot. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. This is really good. 
I love that the noodles, which is the squash, I love the textures that this has. The meat is soft, the tomatoes and the chilies are also soft, but then you have that little bit of the spaghetti squash, like just a little bit of a bite. And then you have the cheese. Oh, the textures in this, this is pretty amazing. Flavor wise, this is a, this is a home run. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Okay, this is a recipe I'm going to keep forever. This is freaking amazing. Amazing. Don't believe me though, you should try it. No, really, you should. Especially if you're keto. I looked it up. It's keto. All right, you guys, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week, and I'm always looking for the next adventure, so if you have one, leave it in the comments below, and I would be glad to check it out. Otherwise, I'll just be here eating my spaghetti squash lasagna, because this, this is where it's at. All right, you guys, see you later. I miss music. When I'm recording videos, usually when I'm in the kitchen, I'm listening to something on my Google Home. And uh, when I'm recording, because of the rights and everything else, I can't listen to anything. And it's, it's almost sad sometimes. I mean, I know I put music on there for you guys, but it's kind of sad sometimes that I don't have music that I can listen to, that I have the rights to, so that I can enjoy. Ah! Struggle's real.